During the summer of 2013, in a television studio in London, a groundbreaking meal was being prepared by an internationally renowned chef in front of a panel of journalists. Yet the dish presented to the professional food critics was a lot more basic than you might expect, a plain beef burger. Except this was no ordinary beef burger. Sure, it was 100% beef, but this beef didn't come from a cow, at least not directly. It was the world's first taste test of a new type of meat, lab-grown meat, and that TV demonstration may have set the stage for the future of meat production. Seven years later, we've just passed another major milestone, the first regulatory approval of cultured meat. Cultured meat, sometimes called lab-grown meat, in vitro meat, artificial meat, and others, refers to the process of growing meat directly from animal cells, rather than rearing and slaughtering the animal itself. This is not to be confused with alternative meats that aim to replicate the taste and texture of animal meat through plant-derived proteins, a technology which is improving quickly, but perhaps that's another video. Cultured meat has the potential to be indistinguishable and even superior to conventionally produced meat. It's a very difficult process that we've been developing for over a decade, so why go to all this trouble? If you've seen the Vertical Farming series, you'll already be aware of challenges caused by current agricultural practices. And when it comes to agriculture, meat is the worst offender. Meat production accounts for an astonishing 40% of global habitable land and 15% of greenhouse gas emissions. Agriculture is also the primary consumer of global fresh water and meat production is the main culprit. In contrast to current methods, cultured meat promises a fraction of the land and water demand without the need to slaughter animals. But there are also some additional potential benefits, from health to food security and perhaps even cost. But do we even need cultured meat? Protein can be derived from non-animal sources. In fact, plants account for 60% of global protein. Still, the demand for meat can't be overlooked. In fact, it's rising. While vegetarianism and veganism are gaining in popularity, global meat consumption is growing at 1.4% per year, and that trend is especially prevalent in developing countries that have previously had limited access to protein. Meat is a key ingredient of meals all over the world. As such, the potential benefits of replacing meat derived from the slaughter of animals is enormous. But is cultured meat a viable candidate for meeting our growing meat demand without the damaging effects of our current production methods? Cultured meat has just overcome one of its largest hurdles on the path to becoming the future of meat consumption, gaining regulatory approval for sale in Singapore. American firm Just Eat became the first to meet safety standards for its lab-grown chicken nuggets. Regulatory approval had previously been seen as a major milestone for this industry, and while Singapore has a population of just 6 million, this opens the door for other countries to follow suit. Still, at this stage, we have just one country's approval for one product served at premium restaurants at a price point of $50 per nugget, making it very much the Ferrari of chicken nuggets. But cultured meat has many more challenges ahead. Stem cells exist in muscle tissue and are used to regenerate in the event of an injury. It's extracted from living animals during biopsy under anesthesia. One cell extraction is enough to produce 80,000 burgers. Muscle cells are then multiplied in a bioreactor in a similar process that is used for beer or yogurt fermentation. Control of feeding inputs acts as a signal to the stem cells to convert themselves into strings of muscles called myotubes. The myotubes are placed in a water gel mix and they naturally contract and grow into larger strands of muscle. The fully grown muscle strands are layered together to replicate how muscle is structured in real meat. While the process itself is artificial, the cells themselves aren't modified genetically for this to work. Rather, it takes advantage of cells' innate process programming to behave the way they normally would inside an animal. As a result, the tissue produced is real. One of the big questions surrounding cultured meat is that of acceptance. Are people actually willing to eat meat grown directly from cells? 
A recent study helped shed some light on that, showing that many people are willing to eat and even pay a premium for cultured meat, with the environment and animal welfare being the primary reasons people view it positively. Though the study does highlight the importance of framing on how people respond to cultured meat as a food. One of the major deal breakers of lab-grown meat is the quality of its taste and texture. If lab-grown meat is going to start as a premium product, then it needs to taste like it. In principle, the potential for texture and taste control is much higher than conventional meat, but it will take a lot of development to get there. After all, meat is a lot more complicated than just the muscle fibers themselves. Many factors affect the final taste and texture. Early cultured meat was relatively plain and struggled to replicate the texture and juiciness of meat. Recent examples have anecdotally impressed, but we'll need to see a blind taste test to really see how it compares. But just how safe is lab-grown meat? Well, safer than conventionally sourced meat and healthier too. There are a number of health concerns related to current meat production, both in terms of meat and nutritional quality, as well as contamination and supply chain transparency. The risk of disease vectors is also often overlooked. Most pathogens we face emerge from our proximity to animals, and the use of antibiotics in preventing the spread of disease throughout livestock is a large factor in the growing threat of bacterial resistance. The environmental argument for cultured meat is large, given how significant a role current meat production has in environmental damage. However, when it comes to emission reductions, the positive impact needs to be validated. A 2019 study investigating the climate impact of large-scale cultured meat production concluded that it is not yet clear whether cultured meat production would provide a more climactically sustainable alternative. Producing cultured meat may require a lot of energy depending on the approach used, and if that energy is derived from fossil fuels, there may be a significant carbon penalty. It's not yet clear what the most effective process is for producing lab-grown meat, though most modelled approaches represent a notable greenhouse gas reduction. Still, at these early stages, it's important to be mindful that good data is hard to come by, and we need to be careful of assuming cultured meat is guaranteed to eliminate meat's 16% contribution to GHGs. Many factors such as the rate of technological improvement in this field and increasing levels of clean energy may have a big impact on the scale of GHG reduction. The cultured burger we saw at the beginning of the video didn't come cheap. In fact, it cost an incredible $280,000. And that's without the sides. But that was in 2013, so the $50 nuggets are an absolute steal in comparison. Still, cultured meat is over an order of magnitude too expensive to be considered cost competitive for even a premium product. The most expensive input of cultured meat is the non-animal proteins used as the cellular growth medium. This process is currently a pharmaceutical grade approach and results in tiny quantities. This needs to be turned into a scalable industrial method to drastically reduce the expense. Analogous processes already exist, however, and the scaled up processes are similar to those seen in the fermentation of cheese and beer. Aleph Farms from Israel claims to have already developed such a process and they'll be able to produce a burger at a cost of $10 when producing at scale and believes that it will ultimately be able to produce cultured meat at a lower cost than conventional methods. In principle, it should be possible to grow meat very cheaply with far fewer import costs than are required in the rearing and slaughtering of livestock. But there are a number of challenges for cultured meat to overcome first. The big question is, how long will it take to solve them? The next few years are going to be crucial for this brand new industry. Hopefully, many of the key questions can be answered. How much will the public get behind this promising technology? Will we be able to keep the energy inputs low enough to realize the full environmental benefits? Will we be able to reduce the cost enough to enable significant scaling? I'm personally quite optimistic that most of the key elements are in place for this technology and that we'll be able to develop the necessary processes and technologies to make this viable. The news of the first approval for sale is a really huge step towards this technology's future and this channel will cover any interesting developments going forward, so you might want to consider subscribing to be notified in the future. If you're interested in other developments in the future of food, check out my video on the latest vertical farming breakthroughs here. 
Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.